you know, I felt that way when I was young. I always felt like I was a day late to the party, you know, and I was, it was like walking into a hurricane zone and, and it was just littered in confetti, you know. Yeah, and I was there to just, you know, just kind of pick up the crumbs and drink the leftover alcohol. It was after the big Vegas dump in the Snap Magazine went under and gambled all their money away. And all the hustlers went home to get real jobs. And it was, you know, I was just kind of walking through a dream, just kind of examining the, the scene of the crime, you know. So I was, I was down in... I spent a lot of time in Florida and along the Gulf Coast and Louisiana and, and southern Alabama. I was attracted to the Cajun people because they, they work hard and they party hard. And, and I, I kind of justified that period of time with me running to something. Um but the truth is I was running away from what I had become in Tennessee. I didn't like what I was becoming. And I just wanted to create a whole new identity and new life. And, and a, I was living like, you know, just a vagabond hippie and, and just trying to find what the hell freedom was or as close to it as I could get. But there is always that thing that I was too late, you know, I was, I was too late, I missed all the action, it, it was definitely coming to an end, and, and then, and the internet was coming, and that would kill anybody's, you know, hope of being a traveling pool player, it was just all coming to an end, and, and some people, you know, got away clean, and I had a lot of friends that wound up dead or trapped in, in horrible jobs and dead-end lives, and, you know, I, I, I was running from all of that. I was, I was trying to survive in my own way while just becoming what I wanted to become and, and not kind of facing what I really was and who I really was. But that's the thing with being a pool player is you can always get better, so you're always running to something. You're always chasing a, a, a dream. And it never ends for the rest of your life. You're always chasing, even when you're the best in the world, you can always get better and you can always uh, prove yourself in, you know, somehow, some way. But no, I stopped feeling that way, and then, and then I retreated home in the early part of the turn of the century, it was 2002 or whatever, just for a visit, just, uh, just to kind of ground myself and face who I really was. And, and that's when I met my wife and fell in love and got married and quit the game altogether. When I returned 11 years later, I didn't re return because I still felt like I had something to prove. I returned just because I loved the game and because something in my life was missing, and that's what it was. I don't have a lot of regrets. Uh, maybe some small things, but nothing major, nothing big, nothing that's going to haunt me on my deathbed. There's, you know, I, I was just trying to live my life the way I felt. My life should be lived. I know it's tough. I, mean, I went through some tough times, but I don't. I don't regret trying. You can't really blame pool players for some of the, you know, decisions they make. Nobody's going to give us anything, and your only real opportunity is to take it. And really, all they're trying to do is just survive another, you know, week or another month or another year. And they just want to keep playing pool. That's pretty much all they know how to do. It's just not like, well, it's either this or, or be a doctor. It's, you know, these, these, most of them are from broken families and they, and they never really had a chance. 
So when you get out there and you see how brutal this subculture pull is, uh, it's either, you know, step up and take it or, you know, decline back into nothing. It was changing <clears throat> slowly uh, throughout the 70s and 80s, but it, it, it changed for good in the, in the late 90s. It was over. And a whole new, you know, culture of pool was developed and salvaged, but it's it's totally different. It's it's not it's not the same. And the best I can do is show players how to give themselves a fair chance in this new world of of pool and billiards. If this is really what they want to do. Here's how to give yourself a fair opportunity to progress and compete at, on higher levels than where they currently are. But at, at, you know, even that has changed in the last couple of years with Fargo killing everybody's action and and cap tournaments. You know, if you're six fifty or above, you're not allowed to play in a lot of tournaments, and it's knocking out the 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 guy with real potential between a shortstop and a pro, he has nowhere to go, nowhere to compete, and he can't compete at the highest levels in the world, and he's not allowed to play in a lot of local tournaments. So it's really, if you want to know why, you know, where's all the good pool players in America, they're home. They're back at, in their hometowns working jobs because they're not even allowed to play anymore. So how does, how does that guy or women develop their pool game? How do they get to the pro level when there's nowhere for them to compete? I mean, they can show up at, at the derby in these open pro tournaments, but you know, when you go to and out in, in 10 in a row of them because you can't compete at that level, how are you supposed to develop your game? To get to that level, you can't just keep throwing away thousands and thousands of dollars. So they're stuck, and and these these handicap tournaments and, and this Fargo rating system, I promise you, and the cowardness of today's player who won't get in a tournament with a top shelf player or a top you know shortstop or you know with six seventy five Fargo. And they're not going anywhere either. So American pool, the growth of it is being stunted. And it's sad and it's a shame. And what am I supposed to tell these guys? Getting you still all of your kicks and pleasures tied up. Words, are you say it? I was your very first love. Great, you're so conventional, secular, sentimental. Age, I learned to build a baby, but I was myself. Send it in a matter that the president has tempers. Of a toddler, did you like it when we talked about the changing of the weather? Like a child with no good feather, instead of tending to the fire. Right behind your eyes I lied I think I'm lost again What's new? Raising friends to conversations Bit of recommendations How do you know what I need If you don't know what you mean? Well, my knees keep missing this And perhaps keep flashing So shaking like a woman laughing Maybe this could be the best Don't lie, I think we're lost again.